So this is Peaches. See what's on Peaches' forehead? That's what we're gonna work on today. We call those cockleburrows, and they get stuck in just about everything. Obviously, the bison, you can see the fresh ones, the green ones that they've been rubbing on. And all they're doing is simply pushing that weed back so they can get to grass. And those cockleburrows get stuck in everything. Even if I walk by them, they'd be stuck to our pants. And I can't stand them. I want them gone. And so today, my wife and I, Marissa, we're gonna go out and we're gonna spray these dadgum weeds and get, try to get rid of these cockleburrows. Almost just as big as each other. You know what? Well, hey guys, what's happening? Welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. I'm Dusty Baker. Behind the camera today is my wife, Marissa. Um, today we're going to do something a little different. Um, we are going to spray some weeds today out in one of our big pastures. Um, as you can tell, we're having some issues with what we call cockleburrows. Um, that's the common name that we call them. And uh, you can see those nasty things that are getting matted um, on the bison. No, they're not ticks. They're just, it's a simple uh, sticker. And it's a pretty good size sticker. And I absolutely hate them. I cannot stand these things. Um, and my family knows I hate them because I hate seeing them stuck in my bison. And there's nothing I can do to get them out. Once they're in there, um, it's not like I can go up and pick them pick them off like it's my dog or anything so um, the only way to really get these things out is to run them through the chute and, and comb them out and that would still even then be a tough process and I know the bison wouldn't really go for that so a way to reduce these is what we're gonna do is we've already fed the bison since they're up here and we are going to rotate pastures uh, I've got a, a lot um, that has been rested for about uh, 20 plus days now and we've we've shut it off from the bison as part of our um, rotation system we shut it off it's had time to recover there's some uh, more growth in there now and so we're gonna shut off the big pasture which is where they've been which is where they've been getting all these cockleburrows from and we're gonna shut them off and then we're gonna move them into one of our uh, pastures that has been kind of, uh, it's had some time to heal and grow some fresh grass that the bison will love.
so we're out here in a big pasture. And so if you want to come take a close look, this is what we're doing with. I don't know where this thing come from, but this is my least favorite plant probably in the world. This thing absolutely sucks. So here is what the cockabro is and it is sharp and it is pointy and look at all those fine hairs and a lot of, um, just a lot of stickers basically here. And this is just one plant, this is just one plant. We're gonna get into batches of them. I absolutely hate these things and they get all over the bison and they'll stick to just about anything they'll stick to your dogs they'll stick to your clothes and so we're gonna try to get rid of these today so the bad part about these cockaburros is once they attach to a host which could be a dog be a cow obviously our bison so once it attaches to a host and those bison move and they go somewhere else they dust on the ground they roll around they lay down once that cockleburrow falls off there goes the seed and so that's how these things really spread unfortunately they'll attach to just about it anything and then when they fall off and they could fall off you know far away from where the plant starts, there you have a reseed and it starts all over again. Today, I'm going around with just a simple hand sprayer and knocking out these and we'd rather do this than spray the whole field. Um, you've got direct contact, direct spraying right here on each plant. It's gonna take longer and a little bit more labor but I'd rather do it this way than spray the entire field. So this is the best way to do it, um, in my personal opinion. Um, I know some of you are going, oh, he's spraying herbicide, freaking out, because the bison will be in here, but we give this thing plenty of time to recover. We'll give this up to from a week to, to two weeks. And, and really all it needs for that herbicide to settle in is 48 hours, and that's, that's still plenty of time. But we're gonna give this lot um, probably a week or two to really kill these off and get that herbicide away. So we're not taking really any risk at all. Um, so it's we're gonna have plenty of time um, for this pasture to recover. Um, it's not everywhere, but it's sparringly spread out and we're gonna attack the big portion of it. Burnt this thing, none of this stuff will come around. Use a natural way. Burn the sucker. So when you take a look at these plants, I mean I'm barely six foot and I mean that's that's above my knees. But when you take a look here, every single one of these plants has, I don't know, twenty to thirty of these cockerels. And inside the cockerels are two seeds. And so do the math. That's a lot of seeds that are spreading out in these pastures. It's not very hard to spread these things, spread these things especially when they die. Um, like today, it's a little windy here in Oklahoma, like it always is. But um, those things will fly and they'll just keep spreading and spreading and spreading. So here we have some of the dead ones. As you can tell, this plant will start to die and they'll turn brown. The first thing that they do is they'll fall to the ground, like here. Just like so. Right there. 
once they've fallen and there they're seated right there so look all these dead plant material stuck to them so this one is starting to die look at that that is nasty so what i've heard is velcro came from these weeds this um, sticker um, and it makes total sense that velcro could come to this because these things I mean, they'll just they stick together they stick to just about anything here are some fresh ones We have green grass out here. This is this is Bermuda, and the bison do eat this grass um, up here in one of our top big pastures. Um, so we can't really burn, and um, so uh, the best time to burn is, is in the fall or in the spring. And maybe if I can talk my stepdad into it, we can burn this pasture and, and hopefully get rid of a lot of these weeds. And starting with these right here, um, fire can do some amazing things. To eat it. a lot of fresh grass up and regenerate you know a lot of that natural grass that occurs here uh, that the bison absolutely love so um, that's another method that you can use obviously can't burn because it's we're getting in the fall and we've got a lot of green grass and that's what the bison need is green grass so this is just something that we're gonna have to deal with it's part of it um, part of this whole acreage that we have here is using the bison to kind of um, consume those grasses and bring back some of that natural grass. These bison, as they go through here and they tromp on this grass and they pee and they poop on it, they're actually doing it a favor. They're shoving a lot of that good nutrients and those seeds back into the soil every time that they travel through here and they're grazing. And so, um, as we use that throughout these pastures, you know, over time, it'll take a little time, we'll get rid of a lot of this kind of stuff and bring back some of these natural grasses that occur here in southern Oklahoma. Okay, so here we have some cockaburras that, some of that are already dying, and then here we have some fresh ones, but, um, you know, if you wanna, if you wanna know what these things feel like, it's basically like um, Velcro. I mean, these things stick together. I, I mean, just like Velcro. Look, even the fresh ones stick to it. But they're, they're just a lot more pointy. Um, I mean, if you squeeze too hard, they'll, I mean, they'll, they'll get into your skin pretty good. So, um, absolutely um, something that we don't want here. And So a perfect example of peaches right here that has lots and lots of cocker barrels on her head. And uh, I feel bad for them. I know it's just part of it. Uh, this exotic and invasive species of, of weed that we have. Kind of frustrated that we have these on our bison. It's part of having, um, you know, animals. It's part of having a farm. And those are some of the things that you have to deal with. And we'll take it, unfortunately. They'll be stuck to the bison for a while, at least some of them, like peaches here. But um, so when you see uh, these cocker barrels in the video, you'll know hopefully what I'm talking about now. That's basically sticking Velcro in, in your hair is all it is. And they'll keep them for a while. Uh, when they shed next spring into summer, that's when they'll kind of fall off. And unfortunately, they'll reseed from there. But hopefully we'll be able to do some burning, if I can talk um, a stepdad into it. 
we can hopefully do some burning and get rid of these cockleburrows. Well, hope that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's not a lot of the bison. Um, not really happy um, with what's all over their face right now with the cockleburrows. Um, this is just one of the things that we have to deal with um, when you when you let your bison out into new pastures, uh, pastures that they haven't really spent a lot of time in. And so this is just part of some of the things you have to deal with on a farm. And hopefully spraying them will help a little bit. Um, I think in the end, um, maybe in the fall or in the spring, we're able to burn that pasture, um, which is something that I love to do. Um, maybe we can do that and maybe everything will get cleaned up and the bison will love that fresh grass that'll come up in the spring and early summer. But anyways, if you haven't subscribed to us, uh, follow us on YouTube across timbers bison and follow us on facebook or instagram and uh, just stay in touch with us if you have any questions or comments leave us a comment um, below thank you guys